this podcast episode might contain some strong language and sexual references. We are melting stone, fiery fury and further, stepping out of what they said was set in it, marching through them, skipping across running water. The current can't hold us. We are melting stone. Millennial love to me is something relatively new, something that has crept in our society uh, quite suddenly, probably because most of the people are quite busy in recent times. They don't have a lot of free time to find a mate or someone to date, uh, as we did traditionally in, past, in the past years. So basically they rely on applications and websites like, uh, like this to get to know someone else to arrange a date. Uh, the concept is a bit strange for me because I believe I'm a bit of a romantic kind of guy. I believe that I should, uh, fate could be the factor that determines if I'm going to meet the, the woman I'm going to spend my life uh, with. But we have to realize that times are different, times change, we have to adapt, and this provides a good opportunity and chance to uh, allow people to get together so be, because being alone isn't uh, really what humans are made for. And this provides a good chance for everyone to find his or her mate using technology and uh, those new means that are available to us uh, these years. Millennial love to me is both good and bad. And I think that's because there's so many opportunities now to date so many different people through dating apps, um, and so yeah social a lot of social media um and i think it's really good that we've come so far from the days where we had to get married and have kids at such a young age but it's also a bad thing because that means me- people have the more opportunity to date as many people as they want as they want and that makes them hold back from becoming committed and that also in itself makes it difficult to have a long lasting relationship um, and find love and I think because people are using dating apps to find people it's also easier to just cut things off so you could have a one night stand and literally just never message them again just ghost them and I think that like is really hard for men and women on the receiving end and I think that also puts people off from dating and you know becoming committed so it's it's really difficult I think because they're not really saying what uh, what they're looking for, they're just seeing what's happening. Um, it transferred in, transfers into a relationship, so they don't want. They're not saying they're looking for a specific thing. They're just seeing where it's going, and that makes it difficult to work on a relationship when you don't even know what that is. I think the older generation, it was more difficult for them because they couldn't come out as gay or bi, um, and now it's a lot more accepting. So people aren't really saying they're either or straight. They're just seeing what's happening with the person they're with, which I think is fantastic. Hi there. My name is Alice. Thank you for listening in. You might have stumbled across this podcast, most probably having no idea what this is about. Or you might think, oh, yet another person spewing out ideas and opinions into the world wide web. Well, yes, that is what this is. And at the same time, maybe not. I am a social worker and a conversational motivational therapist with a postgraduate degree in gender, sexuality and diversity studies turned journalist. 
I was originally going to study couples therapy, but for many reasons this wasn't for me. Maybe the saying "those who can't teach" scared me enough to stay way clear of that. Not that my love life is all that at the moment, and funnily enough, here I am, probably touching that territory, anyways. You might be wondering about the name of this podcast, Ali, her hair and shy. I am writing a series of short stories about Ali, and will read them at the end of each podcast. Mostly relatable to the themes of the episode, but sometimes not so much. So stay tuned for that. In this podcast series, I am going to cover multiple topics, such as gender, sex, and the female orgasm, race, technology, and social media, adult loneliness and mental health, and so on. This first episode, however. Will be about millennial love, my experience with it and others, and I guess to not have wasted four years of education and experience, somewhat professional input will be included, in the loosest form, of course. So, let's get to it, shall we? Millennial love for me is having about twenty relationships before you're twenty-five. Millennial love for me is sending a good night text to my boyfriend. I guess I assume that millennial love is more digital. Like、uh, big feelings are being communicated through small devices, and. The majority of millennial love is more concerned with getting their physical needs met, like yeah, rather than investing in long-lasting relationships. Millennial love to me is to see a hot guy on the street and immediately reach for the phone in your pocket so that you can cross paths with him on Happen. For those who don't know, Happen is a dating app where you can talk to people that have been in the same area as you. A little creepy, but very handy in these kinds of situations. It's to be at a social event and meet an attractive person, but feel like not having been able to stalk them on social media first make the odds of them planning to poison you being at least fifty-fifty. It's to feel like a product in a basket of thousands of people, all looking for some sort of intimacy, but always shying away from labels when you actually meet someone that you can see yourself with. And it's taking it slow, meaning having sex and seeing whether it will be too painful to continue due to feelings, and then assess whether it's worth going on an actual date. I was in an almost five-year-long relationship, from I was eighteen till twenty-two. Coming out of cohabitating with whom I thought was the love of my life and a lasting one at that, there is no doubt I felt like a dinosaur, a millennial on paper, and nothing more. I didn't know what Tinder was. It wasn't around when we got together. And so the first time I messaged someone on there, I waited for the next hour, freaking out about the fact that they hadn't answered yet. My friend rolled her eyes and said, "Obviously he's not going to reply straight away. You have to wait, and he might never reply." He did in the end, but I didn't pursue him further. The confusion of not getting text messages back from people who. Had already matched with me turned into a casual deal once I was introduced to ghosting for the first time, and unfortunately, it was me who was the culprit of it this time. This was before I even knew there was a name for it. 
An angry reply from a man I rejected after realising he most likely was just looking to shag me and leave me in the bathroom of some dirty bar made it easier to just stop answering or simply unmatch them. Of course, Tinder is great if you're looking for a quick hookup. And it almost seems most people are in their 20s these days, but what if you are not? Navigating this world is interesting. The millennial dating world. And I am using interesting in the way you would to an aspiring artist who just showed you an installation of a bin and a fire extinguisher. It's not bad, but certainly not good either. Poet Sarah Best refers to online dating in her poem Tinder as a wild west. It sounds like more people find navigating dating these days hard. But do these apps or online dating work to find romance or love? Tinder has been considered to be the most popular dating app. Some consider the app to facilitate a hookup culture. But research done for the Telematics and Informatics Journal, however, shows that one of the major motivations for use of Tinder actually is finding love. Along with, of course, to get some. There might not be any research needed to conclude whether Tinder works for casual sex, but does it work for finding lasting relationships, as people seem to be looking for just that? Apparently so. A quick search online shows multiple married couples and couples from long-term relationships sharing their Tinder meeting stories. But why then? Can it almost feel like we have become consumers of intimacy, buying, quote unquote, and discarding as we see fit, ghosting, benching and breadcrumbing our way through the maze of the online dating world? When you have endless choices, how are you supposed to not think that the grass could be greener on the other swipe? A research done by Michael Rosenfield and Ruben Thomas shows that relationships from Tinder and online dating are no more likely to end in breakups than any other relationships. So maybe there is something to it. However, this was an American study and might not relate to other places in the world. Though a second study done by Elizabeth Timmermans and Cedric Kurtua in Europe found that even though more than one third of Tinder encounters led to casual sex, more than a quarter ended in committed relationships. Perhaps online dating isn't as hopeless as it seems to many. And as a millennial myself, I'd have to admit that my reference to how things were and worked for previous generations is based on films, books and grandma's short tales. Maybe our perception of our dating lives today being harder is based on an inherited nostalgia we are unable to pinpoint. Just a thought. Um, Millennial love for me uh, seems hard and sometimes messy. Um, Today we have all kinds of different websites and apps where you hopefully will meet the love of your life. Uh, For example, Tinder is a popular app for this and uh, a lot of my friends use it. And since I have been in a relationship for the last five and a half years, um, I've actually never used Tinder, but I'm very glad that I don't have to use it Um, because Tinder seems brutal to me. Um, and kind of impersonal. My impression is that you base the person uh, on their looks and because there are so many people who use it, you can just swipe and swipe until you find someone, I don't know, hot enough. Millennial love to me are the children uh, growing up in the 2000s, including my own child. It is the optimism and hope for the future, the unknown. I also think of those days that I spent on MySpace. (laughs) It could 
might seem like the millennial generation moves swiftly from relationship to relationship. In other words, not settling. Apparently, millennials marry later than previous generations and have children later as well. At the same time, it's so far looking as if fewer millennial marriages end in divorce. Maybe millennials are doing something right here. But then again, who said marriage should be the destination for every relationship? And more and more people seem to cohabitate instead. With this new kind of freedom though, it still seems evident from talking to multiple people from various places in the world that there is some feeling of disconnect. And maybe the massive freedom and individuality isn't necessarily freedom. Maybe having no grounds galvanises us to fly, but without a destination, won't our wings grow tired? Perhaps too many options are just as much a cage as none at all. On the other hand, though, maybe friendships is a new millennial way of loving, replacing family life with family of friends. We move a lot more these days, with the world becoming smaller through not only social media, but also new ways and easier ways to travel. Maybe there is a link here to why it's harder to settle. Dating while looking for love as a millennial might be hard, but maybe love doesn't only have to be looked for in another person. Maybe people are looking for love for themselves these days. And yes, I know, self-finding journeys have different connotations depending on whom you talk to. But finding ourselves in this world that to many feels chaotic might be just as important to feel whole and love life for the sake of it. And maybe this is what millennials have gotten right, that a life can be just as full by yourself. I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. You can reach me and comment on the podcast Twitter account at Ali, her hairs and shy. Thank you for listening to my first podcast episode, Millennial Love. I'm Alice. Until next time.